I count the breaths. It helps to overcome the overwhelming urge to crush their faces while they sleep. Well, I won't be doing much of that anymore. <laughs> Welcome back to old school LPs. We're playing Dragon Age Origins. Before we get into the actual gameplay, we read some of our codex entries. Our Lessa is sold. Okay, so there's been an update to this one. We've read everything up to in the last paragraph, which is the Circle of Magi. We're finally called in, almost too late, and Connor was freed from the demon's power, though the damage to Redcliffe was severe. Also got Van Tegan Garen. The Banorn will not bow to you simply because you demand it. Younger brother to Arl Eamon of Redcliffe and uncle to King Caelan, Tegan holds the Banorn of Ranisphere, a tiny province of Redcliffe's squeezed between the Frostback Mountains and Lake Callanhad. Van Tegan avoids the Denerim court except to go hunting with his nephew and rarely makes himself heard at the lands meet, preferring to leave politics to his brother. Loghain Mactir has also had an update. So the last bit is he returned to Dederim and declared himself the regent to his daughter, Queen Honora, demanding that Ferelden follow him against the Darkspawn, upsetting a great many of the bands. His actions sparked a civil war. Loghain's supporters found themselves fighting their neighbors, who blamed Loghain for the death of the king, as well as those who simply wished to take advantage of the power vacuum. Darkspawn. Those who had sought to claim heaven by violence destroyed it. What was golden and pure turned black. Those who had once been mage lords, the brightest of their age, were no longer men, but monsters. Theronides chapter 12, verse 1. Sin was the midwife that ushered the Darkspawn into this world. The magisters fell from the Golden City, and their fate encompassed all our worlds, for they were not alone. No one knows where the Darkspawn came from. A dark mockery of men. In the darkest places they thrive, growing in numbers as a plague of locusts will. In raids, they will often take captives, dragging their victims alive into the deep roads. But most evidence suggests that these are eaten. Like spiders, it seems Darkspawn prefer their food still breathing. Perhaps they are simply spawned by the darkness. Certainly, we know that evil has no trouble perpetuating itself. The last blight was in the Age of Towers, striking once again at the heart of Tevinter, spreading south into Orlay and east into the Free Marches. The plagues spread as far as Ferelden, but the withering and twisting of the land stopped well beyond our borders. Here, Darkspawn have never been more than the stuff of legends. In the northern lands, however, particularly Tevinter and the Anderfells, they say Darkspawn haunt the hinterlands, preying on outlying farmers and isolated villages, a constant threat. From Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Patrine, Chaitree Scholar. I think we'll end it off with Ash Wraith. Legend has it that when Andraste's ashes were taken into hiding, some of her closest disciples gave themselves to the fire, that their restless souls might remain to guard her final resting place forever. Whether they are spirits of Andraste's disciples or merely fade spirits, the temple that houses the sacred urn is filled with wraiths. Created from a burnt corpse, an ash wraith is a powerful and amorphous opponent, able to lash and smother while being immune to most physical attacks. Even if successfully dispersed, it can reform at a later time. Magic is the only real way to fight such a creature, wind and ice attacks being the most useful. They are capable of creating small whirlwinds that are devastating to anyone unfortunate enough to get close and their touch leaves a person drained. Hey, okay. so we're in Denerim. We were wandering around just seeing what was in the main marketplace. And right here we have the home of Brother Genitivi, as well as the Nod Noble Tavern. So let's check out Genitivi's house first. Well, there's a person here who's not Brother Genitivi. Yes, 
What are you doing here? I'm looking for Brother Genitivi. Brother Genitivi? Why? I would like to speak with him about his research. His research? Ah, oh, you mean his search for Andraste's ashes? He was on the trail of the urn of sacred ashes, yes. Whether he found it, the Maker only knows. I haven't seen Brother Genitivi in weeks. He said no word. It's so unlike him. I'm afraid something has happened. Genitivi's research into the urn may have led him into danger. Why would searching for the urn lead him into danger? Perhaps the urn has been lost for a reason. I pray for Genitivi's safety, but hope dwindles with each passing day. I, I tried to send help, but some knights came from Redcliffe looking for him not long ago. I sent them after Genitivi, and they too have disappeared. Where did you send them? Now don't ask me where they went. You'll go after them. And what if ill luck should befall you too? This search is a curse on all of us. Some things are, are not meant to be found. I know that now. I need to obtain the ashes or Arl Eamon will die. <sighs> so be it. All he said before he left was that he would be staying at an inn near Lake Kalinhard, investigating something in that area. What exactly was he investigating? I don't know. All I discovered from going through his research was that he was staying at the inn. But you just said he spoke to you and told you that. Y yes of course he told me, but I also went through his things to see if I could find other clues to his whereabouts. You sound nervous. Hiding something? That's n not true. I told you everything I know. Brother Ginny TV told us, t told me about the inn and that's all. Us? Who's us? Us? I mean me. There is no us. Bah! Why do I keep up this charade? I gave you a chance to turn aside and forget you ever heard of Genitivi and the urn. But you persisted. Now it has come to this. And trust they forgive me, I do this in your name. What? That's a lot of blood. <laughs> That was, um, kind of pathetic sad there, dude. Oh, and now he's naked. Great. Okay, we got Jenna TV's research. Let's see if there's anything else in here. And I'm off. Okay. Hey, the wonders of Thedas. Al Eamon once bought me a miniature golem doll here. Well, when I was young. Really young. <laughs> what is this mysterious door? Ah, okay. So we have a little box that it said was for Red Jenny. So I will present the box. Okay, and then we get some money. Great. Uh, we've got a warehouse. I don't know that we have too much reason to go in there yet. But wonders of Thetis. Let's check out what's in there. Oh, gotta get all our books. Where do you think they get all this stuff? I think they um have any miniature golem dolls. <laughs> Alistair, just start calling it an action figure. I'll be fine. Oh, 
talk to the apprentice first. Yes, make it quick. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So he's uh, one of our... I can't remember what they call him now, but the wizard quests. The, like, free mages. Strange. Let's see this. I knew it. I gave that man the best seven weeks of my life. Well, I guess he won't have me to push around anymore. Ha! <laughs> Fair enough. Welcome to the wonders of Thedas. We carry items crafted by the Circle, as well as a variety of antiquities. Is there anything you would like to see? All right, let's see what he's got. First off, do you have a backpack? You do not. That's sad. We'll get this gift. Pretty sure that's for Shale. Okay. We just got the one thing from him. Yes. And let's check out the tavern. Oh, it's called the Nod Noble, and the, the little sign is literally a dude getting eaten by, like, a, a unicorn? Dragon? Dragoncorn? Something. Okay. Let's see what all is in here. There is no fool Going. like a drunken fool. So mother once told me, and tis still true. Sophie's guard? My shift's nearly over. Thank God, trusty. Huh. So, Shale, when you were standing there all that time, did you sleep? I have no need to sleep. My body does not tire or do oof, other flesh related functions. But don't you get bored? Wouldn't you want to dream at least? I do not dream. This is what it does when it sleeps. It pours its nose and mumbles incoherently. Yes, of course. I thought we all... Huh. You watch me? I watch all closely when they are still at night. There is little else to do. For... hours and hours? I count the breaths. It helps to overcome the overwhelming urge to crush their faces while they sleep. Well... I won't be doing much of that anymore. <laughs> Suitably creepy, Shale. Hmm. Nothing in there. locked door. Before we enter, I'm gonna save. Hey! What are you doing? Uh, cleaning? This is Lady Sophie's room. We'll do the persuade option. Sophie doesn't deserve your loyalty, so look the other way. You're right. She has this coming. Just be quick. I don't want someone else coming in on you. Fair enough. Alistair doesn't like it, but that's okay. I can just give him dolls. It'll be fine. Alright. Room successfully ransacked. I don't know if he's going to care about me opening this chest. Oh, hey! Bash worked for the first time! Though it said I had insufficient skill, which is funny because I should have max lockpicking at this point. Unless it actually uses stats that I'm not thinking of. Hmm. Funny how that bash just didn't work in anything else ever, but it worked then. The 
Blackstone Irregulars. And I'm off. Oh, we got a couple. Okay, four widowed people and letters to give to their husbands. 20 health poultices. Okay. I have 14. Now, if I remember right, do those need deep mushrooms? No. Elf root, flasks, and distillation agent. So I can make those. I bet if we go back to Wonders of Thetis, we can pick up that stuff. I'm a Crimson Ore! Which way you look it or we'll rip your damned eyes out and piss in your skull! Another round for me, Ben! I will leave them to whatever they're doing. What can I get you, stranger? Uh, let's go through any rumors you might have heard. The Dark Spawn have attacked Lothering. I don't think everyone even had fled by the time they came, either. Word has it they swarmed the entire area, making off with prisoners and burning down the buildings. And then they were gone. Just as quick. I wonder if there's anyone left. I heard some chanters were going to head down south, maybe to try to find some survivors. I'm not holding out hope myself. Anything else you need? Turn Loghain has announced that whatever happened to Van Bronick will happen to any other nobleman who doesn't live up to the oath he swore to serve the throne. There's a lot of folks angry about it. Some of the Banorn, who weren't saying anything, are now saying that Loghain is trampling on their rights as sovereign lords. Seems like more fighting is inevitable at this point, doesn't it? Sad state of affairs. Anything else you need? There's news come out of Redcliffe at last. Seems that Arl Eamon has come down with some deadly sickness, probably to blight, and he may even die. If he does, it probably means no one else can stand up to Tern Loghain in the lands meet. Rather fortunate turn for Tern, no? Anything else you need? Van Seerlech has announced he's siding with the throne. That's not surprising, considering his lands border Loghain's. He probably fears what Loghain might do to him if he turns. Anything else you need? There's been another clash of forces, this time north of Lothering. Both the Benorn and Loghain are saying that they won this clash, so we're not sure exactly what happened yet. From the sounds of it, I think the forces accidentally crossed each other and began fighting. What a bloody mess. Anything else you need? There's news out of the Mage Tower that the Circle of Magi had a close call. Demons got out, but the Mages were able to overcome them. Though, not without a lot of damage. I know Mages bring such terror upon themselves, but I have to admit I'm glad we'll still have magic to wield against the Darkspawn. Anything else you need? I'm hearing many tales of corpses clawing out of their graves. All over. Not just people either. Animals too. Just yesterday, a farmer told me about the kitten his daughter had buried behind his barn. Little thing came back to life and crawled up, mewling as loud as you please. That's creepy. His daughter was delighted. At least until it just about chewed her finger off. Strange days, I tell you. Anything else you need? Weird-ass pet cemetery bullshit. I don't know what to tell you. Nothing I can think of at the moment. All right. What can I get you, stranger? Now let's ask if he has uh, anyone that needs help. Perhaps something not in a strictly legal sense. Ahaha, here we go. Correspondence Interruptus. Okay, we've already picked up a fair number of those. We need to clean up after some people that have um, been unalived, let's say. And then toxin extract. Okay. Is that something I can make? Well, there's death root extract. I don't know if... Oh, toxin extract is one of the ingredients. Okay. What can I get you, stranger? Let me see what you have. Right. I'll show you around. Oh, he has flasks and distillation agent. 
Oh, and a deep mushroom. We'll take the deep mushroom. That's a gift. We'll take that. Flasks and distillation agent. We need health poultices. Uh, let's see how many we can afford. Can we get... Let's do 15 of each. See how that does. And he has health poultices, so we'll buy the two of those. And we'll buy the lessers as well. So let's make us some health poultices. Okay. okay. That needs deep mushroom, but we're trying to get deep mushroom uh, for a quest. Yes, I'm right. still here. So we have health poultices. We ought to be able to turn these in now. Is it to you? Your efforts are greatly appreciated. Great. Make us blessings upon you, Warden. And nothing new. Okay. Looks like that's everything in the inn. Let's go into that warehouse back there anyways. If we don't need to be in here yet, then, you know, we'll just ransack the place and leave. And I'm off. Yes. I won't take the blame for this one. This was bad from the start. No way he was here to deal. Oh, okay. So, this is one of those guys that uh, we have to take care of for the interested party. Thanks. I ain't sticking around to see how this turns out. Now, I think I remember what to do with that. But just in case, I'm going to check the quest journal and see if it, like, kind of tells you. Okay, dump the body somewhere discreet in the market, which I believe there's a well... Okay, we still haven't looked at any of uh, the main... Oh, we got another apprentice. Let's talk to him. What is it? I have work to do. What does it say? Ah, I knew this would happen. Just when I was starting to get good. Well, thanks, I guess. Okay. I was gonna say, we haven't uh, talked to any of these people here. Oh, yep, you can see there's a dump site over there. Oh, and another body bag. He came at me! It's not my fault! Why did he come at me? Yeah, they got to learn not to mess with me. Us, right? I mean, he's just going to disappear. Uh, that guy shouldn't be killing anyone. He can't handle it. Yeah, let me just hang out by the chantry and dump these bodies in the well. I like how Alistair just watches and doesn't have anything to say. You'd think he'd be a little upset. There is but one world, one life, one death. There is but one god. Ah, let's see. Okay. Oh, she must be one of our widows. Yes? I have a letter for you from the Blackstone Irregulars. All right. Let me take a look. Why? What did he do to deserve this? I mean, he was fighting and he died. I mean, it happens. Okay, we need Liliana with us for that. That door back there. I can't remember if we've spoken to Night Commander Tavish. I think we did. Uh, let's look at Wade's Emporium. It 
chest back here. Got another love letter. We'll read through those in a bit. Got Master Wade and Heron. Welcome, friends. Welcome to Wade's Emporium. We have the finest armors in Denerim, maybe in all of Ferelden. How may we assist you? Tell me about Wade. You're obviously not from around here. Wade is possibly the most brilliant armorsmith in all of Ferelden. That's not true, Heren. The dwarves of Orzammar make the finest armors around. These piles of rust droppings you force me to make are worthless compared to their work. You never let me have the time, the materials to make something special. Customers expect their armor in a timely fashion, not years late like the last time. That happened once, just once, and you never let it drop. Who's in charge here? I am. Wade owns the Emporium, but without expert assistance and, well, prodding, let's just say the Emporium has improved substantially with our partnership. But I do miss the good old days. I could really take my time to make quality. Oh, by all means, you can return to them. And to the gruel you used to fancy. No, no. Sorry, Herin. Well, let's see what you have for sale. Certainly. Okay, so nothing particularly great at the moment. Um, but let's talk to Master Wade. Herin, the bloody customers are bothering me again. What do I pay you for, anyhow? Sorry, sorry. Wade is a genius. Truly, you will be astonished by his work. Uh, but he doesn't deal with customers. If you need anything, please ask me. And tell her I don't want her looking over my shoulders making doe eyes at me either. I'm thinking, blast it all. Uh, truly sorry, sire. Okay. If I remember right, uh, once we start killing, like, dragons and shit, we can bring things here and have them made into armors. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go around this little market area. See who might want to talk to us. See if anyone cares if we loot their shit. Caesar and Master Ignacio. If you have coin, welcome to our shop. If not, move along. Too many refugees blocking customers. Do you have anything for sale? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh. So, looks like poisony things. We need toxin extract, so let's just buy up those. And let's talk to Master Ignacio. Another visitor, the Maestro. Enjoy browsing my wares. Who are you? Master Trader Ignacio, at your service, good sir. My cousin and I have trade connections all along the seaways. We have furniture, silks, carvings, and much more. Cesar handles the trade stock, I handle other affairs. What affairs are those? Business deals, uh, meetings. Cesar makes it so I am free of the day-to-day -day concerns of our store. Do you need any help? Um, no. Not yet. Perhaps one day. You aren't from Ferelden, are you? No, I am not. I am a trader at heart. My home is the road. But I was born past the waking sea in Antiva. It has been many, many years since I have seen her. But the road oh, is a better mistress than my home city ever was. What do you mean? On the docks of Rialto, life is cheap. As cheap as the dockside ale and the soiled horse. You can live a longer life out here. And a wise man can make a comfortable fortune in time. With the blight, Ferelden isn't exactly safe either. Straightforward... Predictable danger is refreshing to me. Any moment in Rialto, the streets can run red, and often do. I take dark spawn any day. At least you can see them coming. Farewell. 
Not be to you, Warden. I, I didn't tell him I was Grey Warden, did I? Yeah, that guy's up to something. He required. He required. Okay. Going. Got Lizelle. Good day. The market is busy, is it not? Come, rest here. I have the finest selection of flowers and Orlesian scented oils in all of Denerim. For you, perhaps? The oils are very relaxing in baths, no? Where are you from? I am from Orlais. You've heard of us, no? Your Denerim is a fine city, but I miss my Varroyo. She's quite beautiful this time of year. Tell me about Valrio. What I miss most are the clothes. The avenue of flowers this time of year has so many colors. And the skirts. Fine wools, clothes. Many only the nobleborn can afford. Ferelden is more muted. Its fashion's quite old. But I like the people of this city very much. Why did you leave? Orlais has many, many good things, but it is sometimes not so good to be... common. My brother had trouble with a chevalier, and we departed shortly after. What's a chevalier? You know so little of Orlais here. The chevaliers are knights of the highest order. They are the most skilled in the world. Their discipline, formidable. For their service, they're allowed privileges. They can do whatever they want to the lesser born. Why do people put up with them? Because there is little choice. There are so many wonderful things about Orlais, but Ferelden has something precious. Here, a man or a woman is born free and lives free. I do not understand it, but the nobles here are not so high, and none of us are quite so low. As much as I miss my Varroyo, I love where I am. What sort of trouble did you get in? A chevalier took an interest in me. It was his right, but it was unwelcome. Incensed, my brother hit him over the head with a pot. Such a thing is almost treason. We left that very night and came here. Those beasts are allowed to rape women? That and more. Some reveal them for their skill and their high service. But others tread lightly. As lightly as the mouse in the cat's den. If you will excuse me, I... I feel a touch light-headed. Well, that's suitably barbaric and monstrous. Okay, let's see... We didn't investigate this corner here, I don't the think. Maker, my brother and his family made it out of Lothering. He said that the Darkspawn attacked it the very next day. The Darkspawn took another today. A poster. Don't believe the lies. Friends of the Grey Wardens assemble. The hidden pearl holds the key to resistance. The Griffins will rise again. Okay. So we, we know one of the local whorehouses is called the Pearl. You know, I don't know that I want to investigate too much more of the city right now. Let's go back to camp, empty our inventory. Maybe talk to Shale. We haven't talked to Shale yet. And then decide where we want to go. Message for you, milady. Uh, what? More things to deliver. Goodbye. Thank you, small child. Okay. We will investigate that when we come back. For now... Okay, yeah, we've got some various back alleys, the pearl... But... Okay. And a couple new... Places to go here. Let's go back to camp. Alright. I guess I really don't know how to ask you this. Ask me what? Oh, how do I say this? 
You think it would be easier, but every time I'm around you, I feel as if my head's about to explode. I, I can't think straight. That's very sweet. Here's the thing. Being near you makes me crazy. But I can't imagine being without you. Not ever. You're the first woman I've ever spent the night with. And if I have my way, you'll be the last. I feel the same way, Alistair. Good. I'm glad. Let's move on, then. We've got a long way to go yet. Aww. I think that dialogue signifies, like, this is the official, like, we're exclusive with Alistair at this point. Because if you're a little less scrupulous, you can lead several of them on all at once if you wanted to. Let's handle our inventory first. All right, we can get Alistair in the Templar armor. I'm not going to put him in the Templar helm, though. It has a little bit more armor, but his current helm will give him plus two to all his attributes and plus three armor, which is, I think, why he can wear the Templar armor, because he's not quite there yet. Ooh, and Sten can wear the big, big armor. Let's put him in the Blood Dragon plate. We might want that on Alistair eventually, but for right now, Alistair can't wear it anyways. Ooh, shiny. Okay, so we you give Shale the pet rock, you could name it, and I've decided it's Horus. I don't know why, I feel like that's a good name. All right, and let's see what Shale has to say. I see it found some augmentation crystals. I was not even aware it knew about them. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is. No, no, they're quite slimming. It must be the vertical pattern it put them in. Did it know to do that? It must have. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. Great. Thanks, Shale. I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I have decided that it is not much like any of them. That's super. Thanks, Shale. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings? It's a little squicky that you're, you're talking about me like that, but uh, my father was the Terran of High Ever. Oh, then that must be it. I knew there had to be some reason, it being a human and all. I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. And we wouldn't want that. Indeed. Can it imagine the horror? <laughs> now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. It speaks. I would have expected golems to be... different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. I shall kill for the Master and only for the Master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. Are they dirty limericks? Mostly they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? You just seem very... animated. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. I agree. Being a golem would be handy. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other 
functions, walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. <laughs> I don't like the way the chill described that. It speaks. You're still with me, I see. Yes, its adventures are interesting, even if the chances for success are remarkably slim. It would be better to throw oneself off a cliff, I suspect. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. No, stay. You're quite helpful. No doubt. Without me, it would have to carry its inventory on its own. Perhaps we should continue. Its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. Are those crystals in your skin? Which is a stupid question to ask because I put them there, but I'll do it anyways. I like to think of them as accessories. But what do they do? I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. So they're decoration? As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. But they can do other things too. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if added to me. Would you be willing to have more added? Why not? I don't get to wear clothing and other adornments like the rest of you creatures, after all. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more. I'm told you killed your former master. Did I not already tell it that I do not remember doing such? I remember having a master. My memories of what happened to him are vague. Vague? But not non-existent. Clever and true. Oh, very well. Let me see what I can recall. My former master enjoyed experimenting upon me. I remember that much. There was tinkering with spells and then the crystals. He was very eager to alter my function, I think. What sort of experiments? Bah, I am no mage. And he did not explain himself to me, any more than it would explain itself to a sword. He possessed my control rod, and back then, it would have prevented me from doing anything he did not command me to, no matter how I might have wished to. So what happened? I am unsure. He was experimenting, and then... nothing. So he hit the kill me button by accident? Ho, oh, ho, ho. It does like to laugh, does it? But who knows, I may have such a thing. And then he was gone. I was standing where I was, in the village, and I could no longer move. The villagers came, poked and prodded me in fear, and then realized they could neither move me nor destroy me. So they simply left me. And in time, I forgot I hadn't stood there all along. That must have been terrible. I'm sorry. In fact, at first, I found it more of a relief. For so many years, I'd had to leap to that little toadstool's every command. Get this, pick up that, put it down, pick it up again. The gall! At first, I'd hoped he'd simply decided to leave me there paralyzed. An acceptable trade-off. After years passed, I simply stopped caring. Sounds like you had a good rest. I think I was ready to move on. Another few years, and the moss would have covered my face. And then where would I have been? Whatever the mage did seemed to render the control rod useless, for which I should be thankful, yes? And provided it doesn't decide to copy his experiments, not that I would allow it, it is nothing to fear from me. Much. 
I was simply curious about the story. And now it knows, and doesn't it feel better? Let us get back to the walking and the fighting. My stone is beginning to itch again. How did you end up in Honleith? Do you remember? Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> do you remember anything before, Honleaf? I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went, it is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. Just how old are you, exactly? I have no idea. Wilhelm used to brag that the dwarves stopped making golems centuries ago. I do not age as you soft creatures do. Sadly, my memory is no better. Plus, I get bored and stop paying attention. I would have thought you'd enjoy scaring humans. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. Gross. But why were you out in front of the tower? That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Bah. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. His wife? Hmm. I was once larger, ten feet tall. Then the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down. Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. How does someone shrink a golem? With a chisel. And a lot of nerve. Okay. You didn't like this, Wilhelm, I take it. He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Wilhelm's wife sold it, I believe. Hag. Interesting. Done asking about that. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? How did Wilhelm come to acquire you? That part I know, as Wilhelm often bragged about it to whomever was willing to listen to him. He claimed to have found me in the deep roads. I was in the ruins of a taig, he said, deactivated, with my control rod not far away. What was Wilhelm doing in the deep roads? It was a hobby of his, scavenging. One of the reasons he traveled so much is that he was looking for entrances into the deep roads, old places the dwarves had long forgotten. And then he would sneak down and search for magical treasure, before anyone was the wiser. Do you know where in the Deep Roads this was? No. That secretive bastard refused to tell me. I would ask and ask, but no. He used to say that one day, if I were compliant and didn't talk back at his wife, he would take me there and I could look around myself. Rotten lying bastard. If I had his head in my hands now, I would squeeze it like a giant lemon. Squish. You don't know why you were there? I think I remember a battle. It was long before, and then there was darkness. Bah, in short, no, I do not remember why I was there. It makes no difference. So if he hadn't found you... I wouldn't have had to put up with the twit, and I would be none the wiser. 
I don't think I was aware while I was there. Not like in the village. Or perhaps I was. Perhaps that was the dark place, and I simply couldn't see anything. How long could even I sit in the darkness and stare out at nothing, never sleeping? Oh, I do not wish to think of that. You watched that village day and night. For years? I do not sleep, so yes. And I thank it for reminding me. Try to imagine, if it will, what it would be like to be surrounded by nothing but boring peasants, all oblivious to it. Yes, that would be rather horrid. And then there were the birds. A whole village full of pigeons and ravens and sparrows all perching on me day in and day out. Sounds a little... messy. Those foolish villagers would spread bird seed near me, drawing the birds, because they thought having birds perch on me was quaint. Quaint! If there hadn't been the occasional kind soul to scour me clean, I would... Ugh, I would... I don't care to discuss this anymore. You don't seem to like humans much. That is true. I do not. I'm not interested in getting into a discussion on the subject, however. Ask another time. If it is done asking overly obvious questions, let us find some humans to throw off a cliff or something. All right, that looks like all the dialogue with Shale. We upped Zevran's, uh, like, relationship score with us, so let's see if he's got anything new, too. I've a question, if I may. Go ahead. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Does your oath expire, then? Not precisely. I said I would serve you until you saw fit to release me. One simply assumes that once your Grey Warden business is finished, you would have no need of an assassin to follow you about. Am I wrong? I could always use a friend. Indeed. Hmm. I might even be glad to call myself such, come to think of it. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? So tell me about your adventures. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? You certainly talk like you've had adventures. Falling down a flight of stairs is an adventure. Falling into someone's bed, also an adventure. I am assuming what you're looking for are professional anecdotes. Let's see, my second mission ever for the Crows was a bit intriguing. I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. Meddling in politics, how? How should I know? I got the impression it involved sex, but then I get that impression about most everything. Odd, really. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs, as I recall. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. And she didn't try Well, yes, twice, actually. Then she decided to try and use me instead. The woman had actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiva City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. Were you upset? At first, yes. Well, not upset. Surprised is really a better word. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The circle of magi was unaware of foul play, and everyone was happier all around. These sorts of things happen to you often? Like being spared by a benevolent mark who then helps me escape from the crows? 
Yes, it does seem to happen now and again, doesn't it? It was after that when I learned that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. A wise lesson to learn. And one that not everyone learns, I'm sad to say. But that's enough tail spinning from me for the moment. Uh, talking about the mage has made me a bit nostalgic, I'm afraid. Ah, the good old days. So tell me more about your adventures. Again? Well now, what might interest you, I wonder? Shall I describe the stages involved with Lanthrax poisoning? I watched a man go through all seven once. That sounds like fun! Haha, <laughs> you have rather macabre tastes, I see. I like that. Let's see, how about the largest battle I ever took part in? That would have been the slaughter of Prince Azrin. Did you hear of that down in these parts? You killed a prince. Me? Not personally, but I did take part in the attack. Prince Azrin was fourth in line to the throne, you see. He started off as 11th, but worked his way up the old-fashioned method by inheriting control of an entire Crocelle from his grandfather. After assassinating his way through the royal family, the king hired three other cells to take down Prince Azrin once and for all. I was in one of those cells. Is this sort of thing common in Antiva? Antivan royalty is very much bound up in the crows. You wouldn't want it run by a bunch of commoners, after all, would you? And this means they get involved in politics quite often. This particular fight nearly bankrupted the nation, I understand. It almost ended up putting a crow on the throne, a commoner. But that's a whole different story. I played a very small part. What did you do? My part in the entire battle was taken up trying to reach Princess Ferina, who had thrown in with her brother. I killed about 11 of her guards personally before I got knocked out of a window. I landed in the river and nearly drowned. I was fished out by some urchins who robbed me blind. Made off with my boots, too. At least they didn't cut my throat. And that was my part in history. You got robbed? By urchins? Mm. I had to find my way back to the safe house, bruised and naked, and thankful to be alive. But there you go. Tale told. Let's be off before I tell more embarrassing stories, huh? Well, the only one that's really worth telling is the story of the mission right before I came to Ferelden. But, no, I... I would rather not. I, I shouldn't have said anything. It's all right. I understand. Thank you. Perhaps another day, huh? Let's see if he's down with teaching his skills now. Hmm. I suppose the crows are already furious, yes? What harm is another tweak to their nose? If you wish to be trained in the basics of an assassin, I can certainly show you. Or anyone else who is also a rogue. It shall be fun. I will make it fun. I promise. Great. And let's check in with Alistair, since we went to see his sister. You know, I've been thinking. What have you been thinking about? Back when we left Goldanners, you told me I needed to look out for myself more than I do. I'm beginning to think you were right. I need to stop letting everyone else make my decisions for me. I need to take a stand and think about myself for a change. Or I'm never going to be happy. Don't let me influence you, Alistair. No, what you said made sense. You were right. I should be looking out for myself more. Or did I not understand you? No, but you don't have to do what I say. I don't have to do it. I want to. What you said made sense. I should have done this a long time ago. I just wanted to thank you. Being with you is the one bright spot out of everything that's happened. I feel the same way. Let's go. We've got a lot left to do. Great. Anything else? Something you need, my dear. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? Where do you see this going between us? Wow. You don't hold back on the hard questions, huh? I don't know where this is going. We have the Blight to think of first, don't we? Everything else just seems so... distant. 
I won't let you go, Alistair. No matter what. Nor I you. Let's just deal with the blight first. There will be time for these sorts of discussions later. Trust me. Okay. I think that's everybody I wanted to talk to at camp. Um, we are about at time for the episode. Didn't get a whole lot done, but uh, we did get a lot of backstory on Shale and advanced with uh, Alistair and Zevran a bit. Let's read some codex entries. Call it a day. Oh, we have some new correspondence interrupt us. To one's paramour. When we last embraced, one noticed the redolence of another's company, but one was unmindful. His most eminent, Sir Feather Hapsmith Oswald the Third. Oh, we've got chapter three of the legend of Callanhad. Callanhad's legend tells that the Lady Shayna harbored a love for her king that went beyond friendship, a love that she had kept secret out of her sense of duty and honor. When offered a love potion by a witch in disguise, a witch who would later turn out to be the vengeance-seeking sister of Arl Simeon, Lady Shayna gave in to temptation. She used the potion on Callanhad, but Queen Meirin discovered the two of them together that night and, brokenhearted, fled Denerim to return to her father. She told Merlin everything, and he angrily threatened to revoke his support of Callanhad and begin anew the Civil War. It is said that Lady Shayna felt remorseful at her manipulation of her best friend's heart and confessed her use of forbidden magic to the court. Although her life was forfeit, Callanhad forgave Shayna for what she had done and refused to have her executed. Merlin furiously roused the other Arls against Callanhad and Lady Shayna, it was not long before Ferelden stood on the brink of civil war once again. Against Callanhad's orders, Lady Shayna went alone to Meirin to plead for peace and plead her case, only to be found out by Merlin and slain. Angered, but also saddened, Callanhad challenged Merlin to an honor duel, a fight neither of them wanted but both knew was necessary, and Merlin was slain. The death of the king's greatest ally, an important Arl, was too much for the young kingdom to bear. The other Arls would not back down in their claims against Callanhad. The threat of civil war rose once again. Callanhad went to his wife one last time then, although none know what he said to her, and then he simply vanished. He left with Meirin a proclamation abdicating his throne in favor of the son his queen carried in her belly, who eventually ascended to the throne as King Waylon I, the king credited with establishing the Theron dynasty lasting to this day. Callanhad would never reappear. The legend of Callanhad himself only grew over time, as stories and sightings multiplied, even long after the point when Callanhad could possibly still be alive. Some say he disappeared into the Kokhari wilds, or went to live with the dwarves, or even became a monk in a reclusive Chantry order. The Chantry named Callanhad one of the Anointed in 788 Storm. Callanhad's sword, Nemestus, was left with Meirin and became a symbol of Ferelden kingship over the next century. Rumors of its magical power grew, and when it was lost in the ambush that killed King Venedrin in 824 Blessed, it was seen as a great blow to the Theron line. Several false swords have appeared since that time, but never has the true sword resurfaced. From the Legend of Callanhad by Brother Heron, Chantry Scribe, 810 Blessed. The History of the Chantry, Chapter 3. It is said that at the Battle of Valerian Fields, Matharath stood and looked out over his armies. He had conquered the southern reaches of the greatest empire the world had ever known, and built splintered barbarian clans into a force to be feared. With pride in his heart, he turned to congratulate his men and found that they had turned from him. Matharath fell to the evil of jealousy. After all that he had done, his wife was the one to receive all the glory. He saw his wife's power and influence, and tired of his place as second husband below the Maker. His heart swelled with fury. If he had conquered just to have his wife wrested from him by a forgotten god and a legion of faith-hungry rabble, then perhaps this war was not worth the trouble. Here. History and the Chant of Light come apart. History tells us that Mafarath looked north into the central Imperium and saw nothing but more war against a rapidly regrouping army, and he despaired. The Chant of Light holds that Mafarath chafed with jealousy of the Maker, 
and jealousy of the glory that Andraste received, although it was he who led the armies. Mafarath traveled to the imperial capital of Minrathis to speak with the Archon Hesarian. There he offered up his wife to the Imperium in return for a truce that would end hostilities once and for all. The Archon, eager to put down the voice of the prophet that stirred his own people against him, agreed. Mafarath led Andraste into an ambush where she was captured by Imperial agents, putting an end to her exalted march. Crowds of loyalists stood in the central square of Minrathis to watch Andraste's execution. By command of the Archon, she was burned at the stake in what the Imperium believed to be the most painful punishment imaginable. According to the Chantry, however, Andraste was instead purified and made whole by the flames, ascending to life at her Maker's side. By all accounts, there was only silence where they expected screams. At the sight of the Prophet burning, the crowds were filled with a profound guilt, as if they had participated in a great blasphemy. So moving was the moment that the Archon himself drew his sword and thrust it into the Prophet's heart, ending her torment and leaving those who assembled to consider the weight of what they had seen. Whereas the execution of Andraste was meant to be a symbol of defeat for the faith of the Maker, in truth, it all but sealed the fate of the worship of the old gods and paved the way for the spread of the Maker's chant. From Tales of the Destruction of Thetis by Brother Genetivi, Chantry Scholar. I find uh, the way that they did the Andrastian faith interesting because they they essentially took the Christian mythos and just changed minor details. Because, I mean, the maker would obviously be God, Andraste would obviously be Christ, even down to where they were supposed to die in a, like, horrible, torturous method, and then ascended to heaven afterwards and, like, re reborn, lived again. And I suppose that would make Mafarath Judas, because he's the one that betrayed her, since we don't have a, a wife equivalent Christ. And that would make Hesarian Pontius Pilate as well. There's like a lot of parallels there. They they really didn't change very much of it. Anyways, that's enough of my rambling. Uh, we'll also do History of the Chantry Chapter 4. I think that will be it. The History of the Chantry Chapter 4. The crowds present at the death of Andraste were right to feel despair. It is believed that the prophet's execution angered the Maker, and he turned his back on humanity once more, leaving the people of Thetis to suffer in the dark. In these dark times, mankind scrambled for light, any light. Some found comfort in demonic cults that promised power and riches in return for worship. Others prayed to the old gods for forgiveness, begging the great dragons to return to the world. Still others fell so low as to worship the darkspawn, forming vile cults dedicated to the exaltation of evil in its purest form. It is said that the world wept as its people begged for a savior who would not come. Andraste's followers, however, did not abandon her teachings when she died. The cult of Andraste rescued her sacred ashes from the courtyard in Memrathis after her execution, stealing them away to a secret temple. The location of that temple has long been lost, but the ashes of Andraste served as a symbol of the enduring nature of faith in the Maker, that humanity could earn the Maker's forgiveness despite its grievous insult to him. With time, the cult of Andraste spread and grew, and the chant of light took form. Sing this chant in the four corners of Thetis, it was said, and the world would gain the Maker's attention at last. As the chant of light spread, the cult of Andraste became known as the Andrastean Chantry. Those who converted to the Chantry's beliefs found it their mission to spread Andraste's word. There were many converts, including powerful people in the Imperium and in the city-states of what is now Orlais. Such was the power of the Maker's word that the young King Draken undertook a series of exalted marches meant to unite the city-states and create an empire solely dedicated to the Maker's will. The Orlesian Empire became the seat of the Chantry's power, the Grand Cathedral in val the source of the movement that birthed the organized Chantry as we know it today. Dracon, by then Emperor Dracon I, created the Circle of Magi, 
the Order of Templars, and the Holy Office of the Divine. Many within the Chantry revere him nearly as equal with Andraste herself. The modern Chantry is a thing of faith and beauty, but it is also a house of necessity, protecting Thetas from powerful forces that would do it harm. Where the Grey Wardens protect the world from the Blights, the Chantry protects mankind from itself. Most of all, the Chantry works to earn the Maker's forgiveness, so that one day he will return and transform the world into the paradise it was always meant to be. From Tales of the Destruction of Thetis by Brother Genitivi, Chantry Scholar. All right, uh, not sure exactly what we'll be doing next time, but we'll be playing more Dragon Age, that much I know. So I'll see you then.